Zoom in. You want to push the button? No, Daddy. Okay, I'm gonna push the button. Whoa! There it is. See it? Way up there. I see it. I don't see it. It's coming down. Here it comes. See it? And hit. <laughs> Where'd it go? It's over here. I want to get it. Wait, let me get it on film. There it is. You see it? Yes. No. Oh. How did you do that? <laughs> it fell out of the sky like that. But it, we found it. Over here. A, it. It's not on fire, Daddy. That's right. That's good, isn't it? I know it's over. Well, we shot it and we got it back. <laughs> Got it back. Okay, what we have today is an Estes 220 Swift model rocket. Size for mini engines. When I got into building rockets years ago, we didn't have many engines. They come in anything from a quarter. This is a half A. Uh, this is the, for the test flight. And this is a uh, A10-3. It says 750 feet on the package. That's pretty good, darn good for a small rocket. This really is a teeny tiny rocket. Let's see what we have. Got a couple of fins here. Small nose cone, body cone, and a launch lug. So this is almost going to be like sticking a couple of fins, fins and a launch lug onto an engine and shooting it with just the engine. Okay, step one is to mark the, the tube, the body of the rocket, for the wings. Should be pretty standard for any model rocket from Estes. Cut out our guide. Get the tape ready first. couple of lines to match up. You can get a jig to set these fins, but really it's not that hard. Okay, next what we're going to do is move the jig up a little bit. And with the pencil, I'm going to mark where it says fin. Sometimes you get a march, mark for a, a launch lug. What I'll do is I'll put an LL. Just so I know that that's not a fin, that's the launch lug. You mark on the front part and the back part. Okay, three marks on each side. Door jam is typically what we use, but uh, so I can do this on film. Just got this piece of plywood here. There we go. Okay. Next, we have a fin pattern. I have like to say I've never had a rocket where I had to uh, actually cut the fins out, but here we have instructions on how to cut the fins out of the uh, kind of two strips. So this is how you do it. So 
long as you cut them a little big, you can always sand them down so they're the exact same size each. So I'm guessing, and I, I'm really thinking that uh, it doesn't really matter the exact shape, as long as they're all the same. Now the idea is that you want to, you want the grain going al along the fin. So you want to make sure you, and if, you couldn't really do it with this piece, but let's say you had a different piece of balsa from another project. Now, you want to make sure that you uh, put that in the right, you want the grain going in the right orientation. And that's just to make it, strengthen it up. So if this is a, a dad and son or dad and daughter activity, or, don't mean to exclude mom, so just, uh, this is a parent kid activity. This kit would probably be a little harder than some of the other ones out there, just because you've got to mark your own fins. You know, some they were all die cut. The bolt, the the fins were all die cut when I was doing this as a youth, and now they're laser cut, so they're really easy to get out of the balsa wood. I mean, the, they come pre-cut, very easy to extract, and you've got enough balsa here that if you mess one up, there's enough balsa for to make a fourth fin. If you're worried about cutting yourself, you can buy uh, cut-proof gloves. So they're not made of latex. They're, you know, some of them are actually spun steel thread. Don't look on Amazon. They're not that expensive. Twelve or fifteen bucks. You'll be money ahead if you save yourself some stitches. So. What I'm going to do is, I know this was the factory edge on all these pieces of balsa. And I'm going to push this down so I get a point. And we'll start sanding. And I've got the guide here. Looks like we got a chip. Okay, that's fine. Now I get them all the same length. I got the top. I got the edge. Get them all the same length now. close. A little wider on the bottom but that's okay. Next step is attach some, attach these things so uh, I've been using Gorilla Glue for this. We'll need, we'll need this bit of instructions here. This is Gorilla Wood Glue. Oh, tight Bond, Elmer's. I bet they all work pretty good. And I'm making a mess here, so I'm going to have to clean this up. What you want to do, ideally you only put glue on the line. And then you put some glue on each fin. I'm just going to set the fins over here on the edge. And you're going to put just enough glue to stick on. All right. So you're going to come back and you're going to paint. You're going to you're going to add more glue here in a little bit. So I've got way too much glue on that. So I'm clean it off. I'm going to go get a wet paper towel. Wipe that down. So, we we'll want to take the nose cone out too. We don't need the nose cone yet. So, 
So you wait for a minute until this glue gets tacky. And you want you want the fins and the glue to all be tacky. And then you just stick them on. Press and hold. You want that bottom at bottom corner of the fin to be flush or even at the bottom of the of the tube. And that didn't quite wait long enough on that one. And what you want to do is set it down on the instructions here and you want to look straight down and here you're making sure that the fins are aligned with that drawing and you want to make sure the fins are straight so you don't get a, a spiral or a weave. Like this fin is a little bit crooked. It's not quite lined up with the line. So there we go. Now with any model rocket, this is the next part, which is the hardest part. We wait. We have to just let it sit. Should be ready to touch in 15 or 20 minutes. It's winter time, you can set it by a fireplace get a hair dryer out. We tacked each fin in place. Now the instructions call to next put a the launch lug in place and then apply glue fillets and uh, cement the, the nose cone in place. But what I like to do is Add a, it adds a little weight to the rocket, but I think it, it's worthwhile because it makes the fins a lot better. So you need two pieces per fin, and I'm using toothpicks. And I'm just going to use a heavy duty pair of scissors. You could use a hobby knife to do this, razor blade, but scissors, you know, hard to cut yourself with scissors. And I'm going to cut six little pieces of toothpick the same length to allow me and then I'm going to glue those in with the fillets like I said it'll add a little bit of weight to the rocket but it'll really strengthen up the fillet fillet is just a reinforcing of the one of those went flying so I'm just going to cut another one A little more glue. The trick about fillets is really to just do a little glue at a time and then go back and and cover and fill them in a couple of times. I'm actually putting more glue on here than I mean to. Now if you have time or the inclination, you know, I'd, what you could do is put a pencil or a pen through the body tube and, and let it sit and let this glue set up and then you won't have the glue running and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not really in a, in a hurry with this rocket. Once they get tacky, once the, the glue gets tacky, then uh, it won't run on you. <clears throat> then you just go on and you do the next 